This time I've got some Photoshop advice for you guys, and really it's Adobe Muse advice. It's advice on how to get Photoshop and Adobe Muse to work together more quickly and more happily. And this is for people who kind of prototype things in Photoshop or build graphic elements in Photoshop on a canvas that they really don't want to bring the whole thing into Adobe Muse flattened. They just want to take one element on a transparent background and pop it into their page. So for instance here, I've got some layers in this document. I've got a cityscape. I've got the Statue of Liberty. Now the Statue of Liberty is its own layer. It's this layer one right here. And my recommendation is to create an action from this. So I'm going to show you guys how to create an action from this. So that way you can repeat it instantly over and over again. Because it's the kind of thing that you'll have to do an awful lot. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by opening the Actions palette. If you guys don't have the Actions palette, you can pull it up from the Window menu from the top of the screen. And I'm going to hit the New button to create a new action. And I'm going to call this PNG to the Desktop. And I'm going to hit Record. Now, whatever I do, it's going to be recorded by Photoshop, and it's going to become part of my action. So you got to be careful not to make any mistakes after you hit Record. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a right click or a secondary click or on my laptop a two finger click on this layer one here and I am going to duplicate it but most importantly I'm gonna duplicate it into a new document and by duplicating it into a new document I'll call this PNG image and hit OK by duplicating it into a new document I've now isolated the Statue of Liberty by itself but here's the part that a lot of people miss there's this really cool trick if you go to image and choose trim and just hit return or OK to skip all those options. It will take all of those extra transparent pixels and crop them out because they really have no data in them. They're not really needed. And now since we're still recording, might as well go file save. It asks us where we want to put it. I'm going to choose the desktop in my case. I'm going to make sure it's set to be a PNG file so that way I can pop it right into Muse. And I'm going to hit save. It asked me a question here. I'm just going to hit OK to skip it. And I'm even going to record myself closing this image. And I'm going to say don't save because it's asking if I want to save it as a Photoshop file. And I don't. And it brings me right back to where I was. Now, that was kind of fast. That went by kind of fast. But luckily with YouTube, you guys can pause and rewind and uh, make sure that you get all of these steps into your recorded action without any mistakes whatsoever. And then come back to the actions palette and hit the stop button. Now what I've done, I've made a list of steps that are going to be repeated every time I come back here and hit the play button at the bottom. And uh, just as an example, I'm going to select this layer of, uh, of cloud cover that I have, this nasty black cloud cover. And with that layer selected now, I can just go to my actions, I can hit play. It's working right away. There we go. And now that that's done, if I take a look at my desktop, I now have PNG image copy on my desktop. Pretty awesome, right? And I can go and rename that. I can put it where it belongs. There are no extra pixels. It's just the part of the layer that had actual image information in it. Uh, so these could be buttons. These could be really any graphic element whatsoever. And you could just yank it out of Photoshop real quick. And then you've got it on your desktop to drop into Muse. Pretty cool. If you like tricks like this, subscribe, stay tuned, and I will have more for you very soon.